Hey guys, today's notes are really going to connect with the notes from yesterday. So I'm still going to review residuals. Remember, residuals is just a subtraction problem. You take the actual value minus your predicted value. So we talked about this yesterday. A positive residual means that the data point is above the line of best fit. And a negative residual means that the data point is below the line of best fit. So here we're talking about the curb weight of a car. <clears throat> it's the weight of the car without luggage or passengers. The table below shows the curb weights and fuel efficiencies of five compact cars. I already went ahead and gave you the least squares line, which also means the line of best fit. Here is the equation. I even went ahead and I graphed it for you. There's the picture of it down here. So the first question asks you to calculate the residual for each of the data points. Remember, your residual is the distance of how far away the dot is from the line. So if you look, you can see that you have four dots above the line and one dot below the line. So that means when I calculate this, I better have four positive numbers and one negative number. So remember how this works. You're going to take this purple equation here, and you're going to substitute in these curb weights. And that's going to be your predicted value. So what I'm doing is, for instance, I'm doing y equals 78.62 minus 1.5290. And for this x, I'm substituting in 25.3. Three. So wherever I saw x, that's what I'm plugging in. So when I pop that into my calculator, I get 39.89. Now I want to do the next one. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And now I want to substitute in 26.94. When you pop that whole thing into your calculator, you get 37.43. So let's do it again. We gotta do the next one. So now I have to take this third one in and substitute it in for the X, 27.79. I'm gonna pop that whole thing into the calculator and it gives me 36.13. Okay, we gotta do two more. So now I'm gonna do this one. So wherever I see X, we're putting 30.12. So popping that whole thing, the red and the blue, into the calculator, you get 32.57. Okay, one more time. We gotta do this last one here. So for X, now I'm plugging in 32.47. I pop this whole thing into the calculator, and it gives me 29.97. Okay, so now to do your residual, it says take your actual minus your predicted. Here's your predicted. Here is your actual. So I'm just going to subtract. 43 minus... 39.89 gives me 3.11. 38 minus 37.43 gives me 0.57. 30 minus 36.13 gives me negative 6.13. 34 minus 32.57 gives me 1.43. And 30 minus 28.97 gives me 1.03. So now I have all my residuals, and exactly what I said should happen, happened. I have one, two, three, four positive ones, and one negative one, because there was only one of those that were below that line of best fit. So then I asked a question. I said, okay, suppose the car has a curb weight of 31. What does the line of best fit predict for the fuel efficiency? So it's asking us to predict. So we have to go back and use this equation. And wherever I see an X, 
I have to plug in a 31. So let's do that. Y equals 78.62 minus 1.5290, and then in parentheses, we're plugging in that 31. All right, when you pop that into your calculator, it gives me 31.22. So now it said, would you be surprised if the actual fuel efficiency was 29 miles per gallon? Explain your answer. Remember, this answer here was your predicted. So now, to answer that question, you have to take your actual minus your predicted, and that will give you your residual. So the actual was 29, your predicted was 31.22, and that gives you negative 2.22. So, you take a look at negative 2.22, and you look at all the rest of these residuals. Does negative 2.22 fall between negative 6.13, which is your smallest one, and 3.11, which is your biggest one? Yeah, it does. So since it falls right in between there, and it asks, would you be surprised? We can say no, because the residual is within the range of the other residuals. All right, so let's turn the page and let's look at what a graph of a residual looks like now. So it wants us to graph them. So when I say graph them, what I'm talking about is we are going to take, let me get rid of all the rest of this stuff, We're going to take this column here, this is our x column, and then we're going to take this column here, this is your y column. So you can see there should be one, two, three, four, five points. So here's your first point. So I'm going to write the points here so I don't have to keep flipping back. 25.33 comma 3.11. Then the next point is 26.94 comma 0 0.57. 27.79 comma negative 6.13. 30.12 comma 1.43. And 32.47 comma 1.03. So those are the five points that I'm asking to plot. I already plotted this one. That's the red one right there. So let's do the next one. 26.94. That is almost to 27. So I know that that is literally right, right there. And then I got to go to 0.57. So 0.57, that's halfway between 0 and 1. So that point's going to kind of be right there, the blue one. Okay, the next one. 27.79 so I'm a little bit more than halfway past 27 so somewhere right there and then I gotta go to negative 6.13 so negative 6.1 is there I'm just gonna go a smidge below it, it looks like my dots gonna be right there okay next one is 30.12 so that means I'm just a smidge past 30. And then I got to go to 1.43, which is almost halfway between 1 and 2. So that's where my next dot will go. And then the last one, 32.47, that's almost exactly 32 and a half, which is right there, and a smidge above 1. So that's where my last dot will go. 
So now you have to look at what these dots are doing. A residual plot that shows that shouldn't be there. Completely random points, meaning that there's no pattern whatsoever to those dots that we just plotted, suggests that the line of best fit or the linear regression is a good fit for the data. This means that the data fits a linear relationship. So when none of these points look like they're making any type of pattern, that means that's a good fit. You don't want a pattern. However, if the data plot shows some sort of pattern, suggests that the line of best fit or the linear regression is a bad fit for the data. That means the data does not fit a linear relationship. Well, if you remember in the front, here was our graph, our line of best fit, okay? That's a pretty straight line. You got one little outlier down here, but the majority of those points are real close to the line. So when you look at your residual plot, you see there's absolutely no pattern to those dots, which makes it a good fit. It was a good linear relationship. So if you look here, here's where I'm talking about a pattern versus a no pattern. If you look at graph A, those dots, they're kind of scattered everywhere. But if you look at graph B, I can kind of see that they make a pattern. They kind of go up and then they come back down. That's a pattern. So the question says, explain using evidence from graph A and graph B, which graph indicates that the model for the data is a good fit. So remember, good fit means no pattern. We want no pattern. So the one that's no pattern is A. So that's what we're going to write. Since the data in graph A shows no pattern, but graph B does show a pattern, That means graph A is the better fit. It's kind of opposite what you would think. No pattern is actually the better fit. So maybe if you think about it being opposite, that'll help you out. So here, I have another one to pick from here. So if we look on our last page here now, after performing analysis on the set of data, Jackie examined the scatter plot of the residual values for each analysis. Which scatter plot indicates the best linear fit for the data? So again, you're looking for the one that does not have a pattern. If you look at number one, that's kind of making a smiley face. I see a pattern there. If you look at number two, that's kind of making a V. I see a, a pattern there too. If you look at number four, that's also making a pattern. That's like a U. But if you look at number three, there's, there's really no pattern there. They're going up, they're going down, whatever. And apparently I can't count because I wrote one, three, two, four, but you get the gist. Okay, this one has no pattern. That's the one you want. Okay, <clears throat> the last one, we just have to graph these. So look, here's your x. So I have to graph my x's first. This, this is a graph. These really are axes. This is 0 right here. So that's negative 1, negative 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't think I have any higher than that. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So these are our points. 2, 2. There's 2, 2. 3, 1. Go to the right 3. Up 1. 3, negative 1. Go to the right 3. Down 1. 4, negative 2. Go to the right four, 
down 2. 6, negative 3. Go to the right, 6, down 3. 7, 2. Go to the right, 7, down 2. 8, negative 1. Go to the right, 8, down 1. 9, 2. Go to the right, 9, up 2. 9, 0. You're just going to the right, 9. And 10, 3. Go to the right, 10, and up to 3. All right, so if you look at this, using the plot, assess the line, the fit of the line for these res residuals and justify your answer. So if you look, is it forming a pattern? Well, if I kind of go like this, it looks to me that it's making the smiley face, so pattern is bad. So I'm going to say the data forms a pattern So the line is a bad fit. Remember, pattern is bad. You don't want to see a pattern. All right, so that finishes up residuals. So you have your last practice set. It's on pages 41 to 42 in your packet. You can go ahead and do that.